Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special episode of an interview with a renowned uh, psychologist from India. I would like to begin this session by introducing myself. I'm Sonia. I'm a freelancer. I work for Project Work in different in corporate sector with different companies. I meet a lot of people in and out. So um, mental health is a topic that I'm very keen on these days because wherever, whatever organization you go into, um, these days they're all talking about mental health. There's a lot of support for employees as well within the organization. So here we go. That's why I've just gone ahead and um, um, just tried to get in touch with a psychologist to just give us a little bit more explanation and um, about mental health and what are the things that we should be aware of. So here I am. I welcome my guest at the show, Ms. Anuradha, who is a psychologist, as I said, founder, director of Good Mental Health. Also, she's a child adoption counsellor, life coach, and also an international radio show host. Welcome, Thank Anuradha. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so blessed. Thanks. That's good. Um, so I've got a series of questions mm -hmm. um, that I am going to take you through. Um, and then if there is um, any, you know, further clarifications, I may get in touch later on at the end and um, ask you more about it. So if it's okay with you, we can start off now. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. My first question is, I would like to know when... Um, did you realize that you wanted to pursue in the field of psychology? Was that your aim from the very beginning? Uh, to be honest, it was a gradual process. So maybe initially I never knew that this is going to be my profession when I was in my childhood. So I guess uh, I can recollect one of the memory from my childhood where like one of the time when I was feeling very low, I was really at a very low moment of my life. I was sad totally and when my mother came to me and uh, she said you're very strong very brave you're uh, easy to understand emotions and you have helped me so many times also she made me realize that you know how uh, you know easily I help people who are like in the family the loved ones and near and dears I was very easy to understand emotions so I think she was the one to, you know, put this thought into my mind and develop this insight. And I'm glad that somehow I was uh, aware of it. And that's when I started to reflect back and thought about, yeah, I am you know, able to understand people. And I'm very happy to help everyone there when they are going through any emotional struggle. Maybe I was never an expert at that time. But yeah, through my limited, uh, you know, um, understanding or just maybe there was something inside me, I helped them out. So which is why I guess, uh, you know, I took this subject in my 11th and 12th and my journey just started on from there. And I went on, did a lot of certifications, collected a lot of, you know, uh, wisdom. And my passion towards this uh, subject just grew up like anything. And I remember when I was in UNIV and was doing my post-graduation, I was so happy to, you know, learn more and more about human brain, psychology, human psychology, and to know a lot was giving me happiness also. So I continued my journey and then there came a time you know, uh, I seriously get enrolled myself into professional studies and I did my licensing. And that was the moment from until now, I believe I am on a right path. I really bl feel blessed and I'm happy that I'm in this career because each day when I deal with any client and when they just, you know, uh, in their feedback, or some, somewhat when at the end of the session, they say that yeah, they are feeling so good, they are feeling happy, relieved from their emotional trouble. That is like so rewarding. And I think I am getting in love with my profession each day. I'm so passionate that each morning there is some goal I have that I have to get ready, go to my clinic, help my clients. And uh, that I think has started from uh, that moment when my mom gave me that awareness, that insight, and my journey started. So it was definitely a gradual process, but I'm happy about it. 
That's really good to know. Yeah, it's it's good that you are able to reflect upon um, those incidences in your life and then from there you can progress and, you know, just and your mother uh, had a very, uh, you know, great role in just highlighting your skills as well. So that's really good. With that, the second question I have is, these days we're hearing a lot about mental health. In your opinion, what do you think? Is this topic new or old or mental health issues has been there forever since? Mental health issues were there ever since. I really believe that every time it was there, it is just that earlier people had no sense of, you know, uh, accepting that they are experiencing such things or there was a shame factor, there was this stigma attached and which is why people were not coming up front for seeking help. Because I don't think that earlier uh, it was a normal conversations among families, among colleagues, among peers or uh, in, uh, you know, uh, your siblings, right? It was a very difficult thing to talk about. And nobody was aware that, you know, uh, mental health should be taken very seriously or should be a thing that can be an easy uh, thing to discuss with anyone. So people were just brushing their concerns under the carpet. And uh, I think the whole scenario has been changed from COVID-19. That's when I started to uh, get so many clients from across the world, right? My platform, Good Mental Health, is a global platform. So I was, I saw that it's whether it is in any part of country, people are struggling, people are feeling that pressure, people are feeling that they need, you know, some help. And they, they came out and there was a lot of awareness by then. And there were a lot of people who had this understanding that if they are going through something and emotionally in terms of emotions if they're going through something they had to work upon it so that they can equally uh, feel you know balanced with their bodies and uh, when I say that mental health it is equally important as physical health because that too is a part of our body people sometimes forget to believe this or accept it and which is not right once you will really think or prioritize your mental health, that's when your uh, journey of, uh, you know, uh, uh, becoming a better person will start to begin, right? Because I consider and WHO has also mentioned that there is no health without mental health. So we should prioritize our mental health and we should not take it, uh, you know, in another way that this is something, a factor of shame or something like that people should not think about it and now I see that people from villages from every part they do come but definitely there is a gradual change that has come and uh, still there is a limited part of society which is still not aware and I guess that if we spread more and more awareness people can really prioritize their mental health so definitely it was there from the very starting but now people are aware of so the trend is changing and yes. you're seeing the change and uh yeah more and people more and more people are aware and they are seeking help yeah correct correct absolutely so and that is really cool. as a psychologist a very good thing for me to know that people are prioritizing their mental health because that's yeah. a beautiful thing that's what we really expect people to prioritize and work upon their mental health which takes us to the next question. How do you think, how can we remove the stigma against talking about mental health? Uh, see, we can remove the stigma by talking more and more. We can actually remove it by making it the part of our conversations everywhere. It starts from your family environment, then uh, at your workplace, uh, in the communities and wherever you go. Make this topic a very casual and a normal thing to talk about. As much we will talk about, we can remove the stigma. People are stigmatized. People need to know, be easy uh, by, uh, you know, about talking about mental health. If they are struggling, they should not struggle in silence. If there's something going on with them, they need not to really sit aside and uh, keep themselves not a part of society, not a part of community. They should talk openly when there's a uh, you know moment they feel that they need some help. They should not suffer. They should not struggle for longer. So, and also I believe that you know a major role can be played by institutions, schools, universities. They can do probably a big role here. 
how because when they will uh, introduce mental health as a subject not just the part of syllabus not just a topic sometimes but a part of syllabus that can help students to be prepared for they can come out of the stigma they cannot feel that there is this, there is something shameful about it so make it a part of syllabus so that children can really understand the strategies how to cope with their mental health situations because uh, if i think about you know my childhood back in my childhood we were never been prepared with mental health as a subject we were never been told that what is mental health if we have uh, we are facing something how to deal with it there can be some challenges in life there can be some adversities nobody prepared us for that and that was become very difficult when we grew as an adult so schools and institutions should take the responsibility to make it the part of mainstream to make the subject very highlighted and there should be at least once a week there should be some classes where students should be aware about what is mental health and aware about how to cope up with challenges what are the things that they should follow in life to maintain their good mental health so definitely we can remove the stigma by talking more and more and bringing this into our daily conversations starting from home to anywhere where we go so that the people who are feeling like you know they can't talk about it they should get that environment that they can openly speak and talk about their concerns yeah sure no that's good in your opinion are common signs or indicators that an individual is struggling with mental health condition yeah uh, you know the indicators or when we talk about symptoms can be clearly visible to people who are near to us who are our loved ones who are family members who may be our colleagues and someone who is uh, close to us right at that point of time when somebody is dealing with any emotional health concern their behavior will be changed they will show some uh, you know patterns that will be clearly visible to only loved ones like they are feeling struggle uh, struggle uh, for getting up in the morning also their eating habits their appetite will be changed it can be increased or maybe so poor so that they are stopping to eat their meals also maybe their sleep pattern will be affected they are not sleeping too much sleeping well maybe they are sleeping too much or sleeping too less both in the both cases it is it is not right right also when the person is cutting off from their loved ones when they are not showing up at important occasions and they are not enjoying life usually which they used to enjoy before so these are the some important indicators that only the loved ones can see and they can get to know that there is something going wrong and importantly i want to mention that this can happen with all of us at certain point of time maybe at one day or the another day we are feeling low and we don't feel like you know uh, eating good and uh, maybe our sleep is disturbed but if once or twice it is happening that is absolutely fine nothing to be worried of we can consider it as a serious thing when this has been happening from days to weeks or it is stretching from weeks to months right that's when uh, we have to understand that there is something wrong we can talk to our loved ones give them or provide them the right help which is needed because if we are stretching it for a longer time we are not letting anyone know or we are not doing anything about it then this uh, you know concern can become a serious one so yeah these are the sure. indicators this is how we can work upon it okay now that's actually a good advice um yeah because everything starts from home so uh -huh. yeah and family members would be the first ones to notice any change in your behavior um and you know that's that's a good idea okay this brings us to the end of the show and i would like to ask you a very important question for our audience how do you think that everyone can improve their mental health just on a day to day living this actually is my very favorite question and which is why i'm <laughs> smiling so big because you know uh, people should really understand that how uh, you know they can safeguard themselves from any emotional health concern 
So there are these strict things that if they will follow in their life, they are going to enjoy a good mental health. So the number one is uh, to eat healthy food. Always fuel your body with the right amount of nutrients and focus on eating healthy diet that has to, that should be including fruits, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables and everything fresh in nature and avoid the junk food, avoid things, uh, drinks which are fizzy and uh, avoid uh, the sweets which are with a lot of icing and, uh, you know, creams, right? Focus on eating the healthy food. That's the first main thing. If you're focusing on good mental health, if you will eat healthy, your mental health is going to be good. Second is focus on exercising. Exercise is a great, important part of us when we want to stay mentally fit and healthy. Why? Because uh, exercising helps us to, ha uh, you know, grow uh, ha happy hormones. And that's important very much important for us to stay mentally fit, mentally healthy. So this is important thing for us to focus on exercising. And I'm not saying that focus on very heavy or cardio exercise. You can do some light exercises that can also work. And majorly the important thing you need to consider is to stay active. At home also, you can stay active by doing the daily, uh, doing the daily chorus. And there are a lot of activities that we can do at home. If we are at our workplace there also, do not continuously sit. You can move around, have a cup of coffee and keep moving, stay active, right? This is one of the things. And either you can, um, you know, add some yoga routine into your life, walk or, uh, uh, you know, just a light walk in the garden, barefooted. And that that is the way you can connect with nature. And that is my another point, which I have to mention make a connection with nature because nature will help us bring positivity in us and that has some kind of a thing due to which you know when we go to nature nature has a capacity to absorb our negativity maybe there are many people who doesn't know but connect yourself with nature you might uh, if you will try connecting with the greenery it will help you to remove your negativity you might have noticed when you go to parks and gardens how suddenly your mood is changed how suddenly you start to feel happy and joyful it's all because of this natural natural phenomenon so connect yourself with nature, be there for some time and feel that, that uh, you know, warmth into your life. And next important point when you're focusing on mental health is to never compare yourself with anyone because everyone's journey is different. Never worried about if somebody is doing very, very well in life. Maybe you have not reached to that stage. Absolutely okay. You have your own pace. You are doing absolutely do well in life, right? You are. You have to become the greatest, grandest version of who you are because you are the best person. You need to get aware about yourself. You need to introspect yourself that what talents you have because everyone is blessed with something in life. Every individual is different from one another. So never compare yourself to anyone. Continue your journey in a very graceful manner. Another thing which I always follow is positive self-talk or positive affirmations. So here, what I want to mention is that there the happen, uh, you know, there there are some times in our life that's when we start to feel low and we start to talk negative. You know, even if we are not, we don't want to do this, but suddenly we are in a, in a phase where we start to feel negative. And that's when we start saying negative things, negative statements, and that is what will start becoming our reality. So focus on to choose your words wisely, make your statements positive and do the positive self-talk often. And if you will make it a routine in the morning and the night, see in if you will follow it for 21 days, how beautiful your life is going to be. And also adding positive affirmations to that, that will bring a great change into your life and you can become a happy and healthy and a mentally sound person. And it's important for everyone to stay mentally healthy. So positive affirmations like uh, if, if you think that this is not my cup of tea, I cannot do this work. Rather change your statements to 
I will try. I can give my 100% in it, right? I'm ready to do it. I'm blessed for everything. There's nothing that I can't do. I will perform my best. So these positive statements can give you that courage and that will become the part of your reality. So now next time, if anything negative comes to your mind, just convert or change it to a positive statement and that will give you some results in instantly. Also, at the end, I want to say that when we are focusing on mental health, it's important for us to prioritize ourselves. For that, we need to set boundaries. There are people who are toxic for us. So we need to choose people wisely. We have to be with people who are good for us, who are positive for us, and who are happy with our growth, with our uh, you know presence. So choose people nicely, wisely, so that we can maintain our mental health. So be with them who are good for our mental health. So that is my last advice for the day. So follow these things, and I think this can give and uh, bring a lot of peace into your mind and happiness and definitely happiness is equivalent to good mental health. Thank you so much, Anuradha, for sharing this insight and wisdom. So I'm sure, like myself, I'm enlightened and so would my audience be as well. So definitely, um, if it's okay, I would share this um, interview with other people who can also gain help and reach out Absolutely. to you. Um, if you can add the links to your social media and how to connect with you, that would actually be very lot lot beneficial for a lot of people who can access. Um, and you're doing a great and a wonderful job. So continue this journey and all the very best. Thank you so much. And I'm so, so happy and glad to share all of my wisdom and uh, all the things, the tips that I've shared for maintaining good mental health. And thank you for having me here. And at the end, I would like to tell audience to connect with me whenever they are suffering from mental health uh, issues. They should not really stay or suffer in silence or ignore their needs when they are in need or of help. They should seek. Also, at the end, I would like to mention that I am available on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You can go yeah. on to check my channels and uh, go on to YouTube, which is very important. There is a lot of information about a lot of issues, mental health concerns. You can go and check uh, Good Mental Health by Psychologist Anuradha. There is plenty of information. If you're dealing with any situation, you can get the self-help tips and that will help you calm down for that particular moment, be it anxiety, be it depression, be it worry, whatever you're experiencing, right? Stay connected. Why? Because you can get the latest update about whatever the information I'm sharing each day. I'm trying to help everyone in every possible way. So connect with me at all of these social media platforms and I can definitely uh, leave the links with you. You can just share it. Sure. And uh, look, I do understand you're on a global platform. So in, it's very convenient these days uh, to yeah. connect globally as well. So, yeah, no, thank you so much. As I said, you're doing a wonderful job and continue your journey. And um sure, everyone would be more than happy to get in touch with you. And um, de definitely wisely said that uh, we shouldn't ignore ourselves and we should definitely prioritize ourselves and that's uh, with this note I would close the interview and thank you once again for your time yeah thank you so much I'm really blessed to be here and thank you see you next time for sure, sure really soon cool all right thank you bye okay take care bye-bye